Right, hello boys and girls. Right, this is a tutorial on how to use Adobe Audition in multi-track mode to help you with your current projects. So last term we learned to use Adobe Audition in waveform mode. We imported sounds and we learned to truncate, normalize and do all sorts of processes. Some of you may have discovered the multi-track mode, uh, but I'm going to show you a quick demonstration on how to use it to put together a bit of a mix of music. So this is, uh, I've just opened Audition here and on the top left hand corner you'll see you've got waveform and multi-track. So we're going to click on multi-track and it should open up a dialogue where you choose how your project is going to save and some of the project settings. So let's work through those first of all. Give it a suitable title. All right, so I'm going to put my music mix. I don't know how many I've made, so I'm going to call it number 20. Uh, if you've got a better name than that, then obviously put it in. You want to know where your project is going to be saved to. Because we all know what happens. You save your project and don't realize what it's saved to. Never find it again. So it's worth checking by clicking on Browse and seeing what it's going to. Right, mine is going to a folder of Adobe Mixdowns which I'm perfectly happy with. I can find that again. So I'm going to choose that. Right, these settings here, these aren't the default settings actually, but you may remember me talking about sample rate and bit depth last term. You don't really need to know the science behind this to any great extent, but it's useful to know that as the numbers get higher, so your sample rate at the moment is 44,100 hertz. If you go higher, then it's better quality. If you go lower, it's worse quality. And uh, you're same with your bit depth. So sample rate, which is the number of samples per second being recorded, that's what goes in your hard drive. Uh, you probably find it defaults 48. Put it on, for this, put it on 44.1 kilohertz. Bit depth, it probably come up to 32 bit float, changes 16. What 44.1 is and 16 bit, that's CD quality. The quality you get on a compact disc. The human ear cannot hear any better quality than that. So it's pointless having any higher ratings, taking up more space in your hard drive. The only time that you would use higher bit rates and higher sample rates is when you are using lots of processing, so lots of compressors, EQs and things like that, because they respond differently to higher quality samples. You get a better result then. But for this project, I'm just mixing some music together. So CD quality it is, make sure it's stereo, because we're using music which has been produced in a stereo format, a left and a right channel. And when you're happy with that, click on OK, there we go. So this is the multi-track look in Adobe. If you scroll up and down using this bar here, you can see you've got some already some tracks installed. And you've also got a bar to scroll through the project. These also double up a zoom in and zoom out functions. Uh, they're quite nifty, actually, unique to Adobe, uh, the way they work. Same here in the vertical bar. You can change that and zoom in and zoom out. We'll come to that in a bit. Right, so we need some music. It's best to have your music on the same drive, the same place as the installation of Adobe Audition, so you don't get any lag. And you can actually create a project folder as well if you want to, rather like we're doing Premiere and bringing music into that. I'm just going to use music from the same drive for this. You can go through and use all these like media browsers, search for it, but Adobe's delightful in the way that it just lets you drag and drop as well. So I'm going to start off with this record. Let's drop it in. Right, this is an old classic. A bit like me. Hmm. And I'm just going to bring that to the start. Now, be careful because there's a volume control in the middle here, and it's so easy to nudge that as you move things around. Here we've got a record. It's the Jackson Sisters, I believe in miracles. I like it. It's dead funky. It's a waveform. You're probably familiar with the look of it. If you look closely, you can see lots of like peaks here. They're called the transients. And just by the shape, I can tell it's quite rhythmical. Let's give that a blast. Okay. Right, what, I don't want to play the whole thing. I'm making the audio equivalent of a moving image move board. I just want to display the kind of audio I'm going to have in my production. So I'm using little segments of music. Uh, of course, if you're doing a DJ mix, use the full tracks. Uh, another tutorial, I'll show you how to beat match. This is purely blending today. I actually want this to start from a brass stab riff which comes in. I can see from the waveform that all things change here. Uh, if I click over here, I'll show you what I mean. 
out. So I need to start at that transient there where the music changes. It's the first beat of a bar. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm going to zoom in much tighter on it so I can get a really good cut. Nice well, bit fiddly zoomy, and you've got to move this bar back and forwards until you uh, get to the bit you want, and then shrink it right in. I'm going to use my razor blade. And it's right there, the cut, just before it happens. There we are. So I'm going to delete the front of this, don't want it anymore. Uh, might be a little messy there, actually. I can see a glitch at the start. Yeah, look, there's a little bit of missed out. So it's worth zooming right in. Right, and I'm going to take that back to the beginning. Always remember to set your uh, bar at the top here back to the beginning so you can see the actual beginning, otherwise you'll leave it hanging in the middle of the project somewhere. If I go back now to the very start, there we are. Okay, I just want a couple of bars of the riff here, I think, and I'm going to move into something else. Let's see how this goes. That's where I want my cut, just before the start of the next bar, because I'm going to bring something else in, which is going to go on that first beat, another tune. So I'm going to cut there. So once again, I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to use my understanding of transients to make sure I've got the right bit. I can zoom in here as well and get like more of a a larger waveform there to really see what's going on. So, back over this. Alright, so you can see right there, that bit there is the transient of the first beat of the next bar. There we go, scrub over it. So what I need to do is get my razor blade put a cut in just before it. That should be nice and neat. Let's check the end of it. Lovely. It's a little bit of a glitch at the end there, so do you remember what I said about putting a little fade out at the end of your edits? That should deal with that. There we go. So the fade tool, it's a little square with two tones of grey in it, and you just pick it up and drag it, and it'll do you a fade out or a fade in at the beginning of a piece. Nice and easy. So, let's bring in another track now. Feeling kind of funky, so I think I'll carry on that way. What have I got next? Oh, yeah. This is good in this like. So, um, Gwen McRae, all this love that I'm giving. Another oldie, because that's how I roll. Let's put this at the end. It kind of, while I've got snap, uh, switched on which is this magnet here it will if you drag it around something significant happening in a project it will s snap together for you so at the point that this piece is cut this piece starts so we've now got because i put this on a second track now that's okay but i can make this better uh the the track starts with dum -dum -bum -bum -bum. All right, so the actual first beat of the bar is when that bass line comes in, and that dig a do is a one, two, three, dig a do. And I'm going to try matching up the transient, which is the first beat of the bar, with the end of the previous recording. I'm going to have to really zoom in on this to get it nice and sweet. So, ah, oh, there's that little glitch I had before. If I line up with that exactly, let's see what happens. It may or may not work, because look, we've got some transits here and these are slightly out. I'd actually be tempted to probably do this, line those two up. So over such a short space of time, it'll probably work. Let's see. Perfect. I don't know if you caught that. Let's have that with a bit more of a run in. Yep, very happy with that. That's great. Okay, so I've got my second track in, 
to our mix. Uh, this one I'm going to have a bit of the verse, I think. So I'm going to play it along and say I'm going to cut it because um, I'm going to make this my significant bit of vocal, perhaps. So. <laughs> That's the start of the next verse, and it's quite handy because it starts on the first beat of the bar. So what I want to do is actually put a cut in just before that transient there and scrub over it. You hear that boom, boom, boom of the kick drum there. I don't particularly need to zoom in on this, I don't think. I might be being a bit arrogant here and watch it all go wrong, but I'm going to just cut in there like that. And um, you can just afford to delete things in Adobe. There is a um, you know a function to select and mute if you want to, which leaves it in place and grays it out. But I find with this sort of thing, you don't really need to, because if you want to put it back, you just pick it up and drag it out again. It's got what's called non-destructive editing. So it's very, very clever stuff. So zoom right in and do a tiny, tiny, tiny little fade. Uh, because I don't want to like cut off the end of the music. Yeah, because there's like a little transient there that probably needs to fade out. There we are, let's try that. Yeah, there we go. Nice and neat. Don't know if you've heard that. So, but I'll play it again with the next bit. Right, so uh, I've got some funky music. It won't suit many productions, this kind of music, to be fair. Um, we've been talking a lot about mood music. I haven't really got any mood music to hand. I've got some ambient music that I've found, so I'll put some of that in. It's quite moody, per se. Uh, this is another old one. Well, it's it's significantly newer than the ones we've been using so far, but I think you were still probably a twinkle in your mother's eye when this came out. Chicane, Offshore. It's an Ibiza classic. Oh, yes. But the ambient mix. So no repetitive beats in this one. Let's give it a blast and see what it sounds like. It's very quiet. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, just the sound of the ocean. That's lovely, that. Pinch it. Use it as some ambient sound. Well, don't pinch it without credit, obviously, you know. There we go. This is the start of the track, so very mellow. Quite moody. But I want that to start at the end of the Gwen McRae track, so... You know what? I think the sound of the sea will fit fine underneath the previous track, so I'm just going to drag it back. I do have a slight issue though, I don't know if you notice the um, bum 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 it's not bang on the beat. If you imagine a pulse. It's almost like a beat which is silent, just before it starts, so it's on the off beat. So I've got to be really careful where I place this, otherwise it's going to sound awkward. I'm going to zoom in and see if I can work this one out. Uh, you may need to work it out by just sort of like moving around till it sounds good, but as long as you're aware of your beats and bars, it will really help you position things correctly. So we've got um, two, three, four. So I want it there on that line. Let's try that. Bit early, actually. Bit early. Sounded uh, that way to me anyway. Let's get um, move slightly to the right. Oh, giving, yeah. yeah, pretty good. Right, I'd want to play the whole of this track. As you can see, it kind of builds up here and then drops down again. So I'm going to put a, a cut in the drop and just put a fade out. Get rid of that. Right, and this time, because I'm not going to do more pieces for this particular project, I'm going to put in a, a longer fade out. And there's my mix, to all intents and purposes. I won't play it all through now. I do have one issue though, I don't know whether you noticed down here the levels, it was going into the red. Kind of. 
actually audition is quite intelligent so far as it warns you to go into the red long before you get to zero. You decide to go into the red at minus six decibels. So at six decibels of headroom, remember we talked about this last term, it was saying, this is getting dodgy, this is going into the red. So have a look again. I don't know whether you'll see from your screens and numbers, but... Uh, Tell me, can't you see all this stuff? Yeah. Essentially, my meter, anything over minus six cells red. We need a bit more headroom in this, particularly even if you're just doing a DJ mix that you want to stream somewhere. You still need to give it some headroom because DJ mixes, when they are played by other people, will probably go through, you know, if it's an online radio station or something, or a podcatcher, it'll be passed through a pile of compressors and limiters and processors. So it needs that headroom anyway, just to allow that to happen without making your music sound just overcooked. I need to bring these tracks down in level, or certainly make them all the same level. You can see the chicane one is much softer in level. These are really hot, these tracks. So what I'm gonna do is just select each one. And for this, you need to go back to the waveform mode to actually access all the processes. So click on waveform, we'll take the one you've got currently selected. And you remember this for the first term, amplitude and compression and normalize. I'm going to set it to minus six decibels. Look, mine's already set up. Do it by decibels, not by percentage. So we want to actually specify how much headroom we're going to have. And for this kind of production, I recommend at least six decibels of headroom. Apply that. And you see, look, the waveform has dropped considerably in this case. But to multi-track, it will take the changes across. There we go, see it's changed. Let's do the same for Gwen McRae's track. Remember your settings, so you need to set it up once. All right, and let's do it for chicane as well. Just to remind you, you're doing your setup, just click on it and you can type in minus six. If you're not, yeah, you know, obviously, I've done that already. It'll come up zero by default. No point, normalize a zero, you're back where you started. There we go. Oh, it's actually taking that one down as well. That's interesting. All right, we're going to have much more headroom now in the mix. Let's go back to the multi track mode. If we, um. There we go. If you look at the meters now, no red. So generally that's peaking about minus 10, but there'll be the odd peak that goes up to minus six in all these records. So if you're happy with your mix, it's time to export it so you can use it in Premiere or play it to your friends over some kind of media player, burn it to CD if you're old school, whatever you want to do. But we you finish your mix, you want to export it. So this is how you do that. File, export, and we go to multi-track mix down. And we want, the entire session and it'll open another dialog. Again, you need to know where you're saving to so you can go and find your mix. You don't want to lose it somewhere in the uh, oblivion of your computer. So at the moment, it's going to my personal documents. I'm happy with that. And the file name is Music Mix 20 Mixdown MP3. Right, when you first do this, it will default to WAV file, .wav, which is fine. It'd be a bigger file, but it'd be better quality. Uh, if you want to take up less space, then use MP3. With a high quality MP3, you will not notice any difference between that and a waveform on normal systems. You would on a very, very big system or very, very high quality system, but it'd be negligible. So the technology for high quality MP3s is quite clever. If you're doing additional processing, always export as waveform because all those compressors and EQs will behave very differently with an MP3 than to a waveform. So let's have a look at the settings at the moment, MP3 192 kbps, it's not the highest setting. Always make sure it's on 320. You would notice the difference of 192, it'd be far too lossy. All set up. Right, and it will process as quickly as your computer can cope with it. And that's your DJ mix done. All you need to do now is go and find it in your folder and bring it into the software of your choice or play it to your heart's content on a media player. Okay?